From the Prudential Center, Big East Basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. We're in Newark for the only ranked matchup of the weekend in college hoops. Number 11, Xavier, looking for its first top 25 road win against Seton Hall, which is unbeaten in this building this season at 11-0. And both these teams, as we move into late January, looking towards the top of the Big East standings. Everybody in the conference, everybody in the country right now, looking up at top-ranked Villanova. Joe Davis, Len Elmore, Lisa Byington, welcome inside. Glad you're with us for what should be a fun one. Both these teams, veteran teams, so I guess no surprise that each side has a senior as the leading scorer, Trayvon Blewett and Desi Rodriguez. Well, what a luxury to have seniors in this age of one and done. And both these guys are reliable, they're mature, and certainly they're focused. Trayvon Blewett, all 20 games this year, he's been in double figures. Fifth in the Big East in scoring, fourth in three-pointers made. He simply hits big shots. And Desi Rodriguez equally consistent, ninth in the conference in scoring and at 17.5 per game. Might have stumbled in the last game, but he's always ready for Xavier. 17.7 rebounds in seven career games against the Musketeers. They are Geico players to watch. Blew it at 23 in the win against St. John's last time out. But of course, Rodriguez, a career low six minutes. And for the latest on that, here's Lisa. Everyone's trying to make it an issue, but Kevin Willard told me it's really a non-issue. He said he did it mouth back. He didn't say anything wrong to me. He just had a bad day and a bad game. And as a head coach, I felt like it was our team's best interest for me to sit him at that point. But since then, he's shown great energy. He's done all the right things. And I expect him to bounce back here today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's part of these starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Mentioned the veteran units, three senior starters for Xavier, four of them for Seton Hall. Well, when you look at one senior starter, Karim Cantor, averaging 18 and a half points, nine and a half rebounds in his last four games. He's been unstoppable. And he set to jump it up against Angel Delgado. 17th meeting between these programs. Seton Hall 10 and 6 in the all-time series. They've never lost in this building against the Musketeers. Off we go on the only top 25 matchup of the weekend, and it's Seton Hall to start with it. Xavier opens up in man-to-man, -man and you can expect trying to get Angel Delgado started after a very poor outing against Creighton. That was an 80-63 loss in Omaha on Wednesday night. Here's Rodriguez bricking a three to get the day started with Carrington the long rebound. And they really stood no shot from the start. Trailed that game 20-4. to Without Delgado, without Rodriguez much of the way. Miles Powell. And an 0 of 2 for Seton Hall on their first trip. Boy, a lot of bodies leaning against Delgado down low. Blue shirts are going to make sure he doesn't have a clean look at the glass. Back to back wins for the Musketeers after their first back to back losses of the season. And now looking for their first top 25 road win of the year. Karen Cantor steps outside, throws up a brick that bounces out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to get a foul on the floor on Seton Hall. Coached by Kevin Willard in his eighth season. Took over in 2010 and has his team at 15 and 4. Kevin Willard contesting the call, but J.P. McCure came flying out of that crowd in the paint. Somebody pushed him. They got Rodriguez. Here's Makira, curling inside, good vision to find Najee Marshall, and the freshman buries a corner three. And Najee Marshall, this is his third start in the last three games, averaged about nine points in those three, in three games since, and he's been hot. Rodriguez with the first bucket for the Pirates. That's a good sign for Seton Hall. As we mentioned, Desi Rodriguez has a lot of success against Avery. Blow it with an air ball, rebound Delgado. Seton Hall looks to run. Miles Powell one on two. Rodriguez buys the foul. Goes on Marshall. Chris Mack on Wednesday night became the all-time wins leader at his alma mater, passing Pete Gillen. It was 203rd win in his nine seasons. Here's Kadeem Carrington. Struggling lately to shoot it, still distributing the ball well. His first shot of the night goes, and St. Paul leads for the first time. And that's got to make you feel good if you're a Pirates fan. And 
He causes the turnover as well. But Carrington came into this game in the last three, shooting six of 26 from the field. And right now, that's what he does well. Penetrates, has the ability to make other guys better, but looking for his own to try to get off the schneid, so to speak. Little one last thing, start, the mid-range game. One thing he has done, though, he's given out six assists during that period when he slumped, so he's still part of this attack. How about J.P. Makira? So crafty to duck inside and score. Yeah, you got to love Makira's energy. Hits the deck and still penetrates. Ishmael Sonogo suddenly becoming an offensive force for the Pirates, averaging double figures over the last three games. He's known for his defense. Well, this is quite a different start than at Creighton. It just shows what home cooking can do for you. 11 all here this year. Here's Gooden with a contested take. Rodriguez ahead of the pack. Desi Rodriguez in traffic draws the foul. Nope, they call a tie-up. They call a tie-up, no foul. And the arrow sends it to the Musketeers. Good hands by Blewett. Rodriguez had Blewett dead to rights. Blewett backing up on his heels. And here, <laughs> Ishmael Sonogo shooting threes. Of that. 4 of 13 from beyond the arc so far this season. Maybe you should do it more often. Yeah, get him. Bad numbers. If they'd give it to him. Yeah, Cantor will try. Still looking for his first bucket. And you see Cantor trying to stretch the defense. Full Delgado out of Powell short with his first three. Rodriguez the offensive rebound. He banks it in through contact. Got a little bit loose with the dribble right in front of that Seton Hall sideline, but no call. Cantor on the baseline. Walks. Try as he might, not able to knock down threes. He tries to take Delgado inside. And as hot as Cantor's been, last three possessions he's had has been pretty ineffective. Close to 20 points per game line over the last four and he's moved into the lineup with that performance. Tyreek Jones now coming off of the bench. What a find for Chris Mack. Karim Cantor, grad transfer from UW Green Bay. Hot start for Desi Rodriguez against J.P. Makira. A turnaround jumper. We mentioned the numbers Rodriguez has had in seven career games against Xavier. And even if he stumbled last game just six points, he sees this team, he's got a lot of confidence. And he's half lead to a 7 0 run and a steal for Carrington. Seton Hall pushes it. Delgado to the rim. And the run is 9 0 for the Pirates. Timeout, Chris Mack. Desi Rodriguez stumbled against Creighton with just six points. But here, he's just feeling it. Home sweet home. Nothing like it. Fox College Chips is sponsored by the Lincoln Continental. Back in Newark, New Jersey. Seton Hall's ripped off a 9-0 run and leading 13-5. And Desi Rodriguez only played six minutes the other night. Already has six points in this one. Well, senior is obviously so reliable. Rodriguez had 16 consecutive double-figure games until Creighton. And he comes back home, and now he's starting to feel far more confident using that size at 6-6 to find opportunities to score. And you look at his numbers today, but even more impressive is the fact that 10 out of Seton Hall's 13 points have been in the paint. And they've been able to get high percentage shots against Xavier. Xavier's going to have to find a way to close that paint down. Lisa told us, Kevin Willard said at Creighton, he just had that look on his face that he didn't necessarily want to be out there. He'd been worn down playing so many minutes. And at that point, they were down 20 to 4 anyways. Got him ready to go for this one. To a hot start against number 11, Xavier. Shot clock inside of 10, and it's kicked to reset it back to 15, or back to 20. And right now, Xavier relegated to just passing the ball around the horn. Normally, they do a good job of finding people inside. Karim Cantor, not necessarily a post-up guy. He likes to turn and face. 
And so now Sean O'Mara, a guy who is a quality post-up guy, is inserted in the game. Expect David to look inside. 54 in black, fronted by Delgado. He's one of the top offensive teams in the country. At their best when they're really sharing the ball. Here they go, land inside to O'Mara, who shares it right back, and Marshall banks it in. Yeah, getting the ball inside does wonders for your offense and really puts a lot of pressure on defenses as they have to adjust to the high percentage opportunity. And St. Hall's been a pretty good defensive team much of the year, but their worst performance at Creighton. Blue Jays shot about 50%. Delgado with a sweeping hook shot. Not a contact on the loose ball, but Saviors. Back inside O'Mara. Two possessions, two touches for the senior big man. Oh, he had him. He didn't go up. Got it up and under. Blew it high off the glass, and Delgado rips it down. Not often you see Sean O'Mara turn down and up and under, but he did that time. Rodriguez stripped momentarily, got it back. And an offensive foul. That's already number two on Desi Rodriguez. And that's by the second or third time J.P. McCure has hit the deck, but does a terrific job of setting the tone, and his teammates have to follow. He cuts Rodriguez off right there, even a little bump. And just enough thespian action no. by McCurry to get the officials' attention. But you just love to play with a guy like that who puts it on the floor and puts it on the line every time. And, you know, I know he's hurting, but he never shows it. Never. Never. I think there are guys across the Big East thinking, when is this guy going to graduate? It seems like he's been there forever. Enough of it. Back inside O'Mara. He's touched it on all three possessions. This time he went for it, but couldn't hit. And he rushed because Delgado just walled up. Never looked to go after the shot. You know, if they calm down and take it to Delgado, they might have some success. Carrington gets the roll. Kaiser Gates really rejuvenated since he's moved to the bench. He's been red hot, averaging close to 15 per game since Chris Mack brought him off of the bench. Well, he's made 52 field goals this year, 42 of them from beyond the arc. And maybe sitting on the bench gave him a little perspective and lit a fire because he has come off the last couple games red hot. And Chris Mack said it was a good reminder that nothing's a given. Your job isn't yeah. just yours because you started the season there. Here's a freshman, Miles Kale, sticking a step back. A little bit of pressure put on from Seton Hall. Gates throws that one up there wildly. And a foul on Akira on the rebound. Go back to that three from Kaiser Gates. Kaiser Gates, beneficiary of some miscommunication. That's the guy guarding him. Here's Gates coming down the floor. And he says, oops, wrong guy. And if you let Kaiser Gates catch and square up like that, even if you get there to challenge, it's too late. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, Kaiser Gates addressed to me a shoot around the fact that he actually enjoys coming off the bench now. He can read, he can react, he can get a flow through the game in the first few minutes of play. And his improved shooting because he's been more deliberate in how he has practiced in the offseason. Corner threes, he's taking more game shots instead of, as you know, probably Len, just rolling out the ball and, and just, you know, kind of shooting around. Not saying that you did that, but it's, <laughs> the, it's the tendency, right, for some players to do that sometimes. Well, absolutely. Back in the day, you know, you were forced to practice the shots you're going to take in the game. Here, guys are giving a little bit of free will. But if I could shoot like that, I'd stay outside the <laughs> line. Seton Hall sharing it with the shot clock winding down to two. Sonogo's got to pull the trigger, didn't get it off. And a shot clock violation. Good defensive possession by Xavier, keeping the ball out of the paint that time. Here's Tyreek Jones, who had been a starter, but with how hot Karen Cantor's gotten, he's coming off of the bench like Gates is now. That was the change that Chris Mack made after the back-to-back -back losses. And Xavier's played really well since. And, and to be fair, I mean, Jones had an injury, didn't play against Creighton. Only got nine minutes against St. John's, but there's no way in the world that he would have supplanted Cantor the way Cantor's been playing of late. Yeah, kind of forced his hand into there, combined with that injury. Jones back and forward inside. Instead, Makira takes it to the rim and will have a chance at three. There's that guy again. 
just a terrific job of challenging right there. Got away with a hook with that right arm, but no harm, no call. And then he, again, challenges the defense. And Mamu Kalashvili, the first time I had to say that. I was that? wondering if we were going to ID the man that made the foul. Sandro Mamu Kalashvili did a decent job getting over there, but it was a little too late. And a decent job saying it by you. <laughs> You don't know how many times I was Mack. practicing this all. <laughs> all right over here, right? <laughs> right up to the time we came on the air. And three-point play from Akira brings Xavier to within four. Leslie Rodriguez working baseline. Jones comes over to reject his shot. Now Marshall pushes for the Musketeers. Offensive rebound, but a foul on Xavier. You know, Kaiser Gates, Len. Yeah, Jones looked at the official at Corbett like I didn't do anything, and he's right. It was Gates, it wasn't Jones. <laughs> A Seton Hall 9-0 run early on as the Pirates in front 17-13 under 12. And across the Big East today, a blowout win for Villanova. They continue to look like the top team in the country. They get 23 from Jalen Brunson today. One of the top scoring attacks in the country belongs to Marquette with Howard and Rousey and what they're doing. One and two in the conference, both averaging better than 20 per game. And Big East having a good year. Six of the top 40 in the RPI. Xavier at 5, Seton Hall at 13. Both teams are some good wins already. This would certainly qualify as one. Seton Hall trying to stay perfect against ranked teams. And while Xavier has five top 50 wins, they don't have one yet on the road. Well, speaking of quality wins, this may not count as a quality win, but Georgetown in over two overtimes beat St. John's. This game just recently ended. St. John's 0-8 right now in the Big East. Georgetown 3-5. This is Jordan Walker, freshman point guard. Uh, to another freshman in Miles Kale. Nice wraparound pass, but it goes out of bounds. And we go in the huddle with Kevin Willard. Great energy. Keep boxing out. Keep boxing out. Keep boxing out. Hey, we've only had one deflection right in the last three and a half minutes. Pick that up. Pick that up. Understand? Looking for activity. That's one of the metrics that coaches use to determine how active your defense is by getting deflected. Paul Scruggs working on Walker. Enzi stuck his hand in, forced him to pick up the dribble. Shot clock inside of 10. Najee Marshall to the rim. Too strong and a good defensive possession for the Pirates. Didn't need a deflection on that one. Just move your feet, take the position away. Akira took a chance. Carrington tried to make him pay, and he will with a trip to the foul line. We check in with Lisa. Joe, I was listening to Chris Mack's huddle, and he commended his team for sustaining that emotional charge they knew they were going to get playing in front of a sellout crowd here at The Rock. He also stressed, I want to continue going over the ball screens, but he said, I don't mind if you guys pick and choose your times to go under the screens. I think he felt like they were getting beat sometimes on those ball screens, resulting in some pain points. Well, certainly the paint points were hurting Xavier initially, but when they started to go inside and kind of evened it up a little bit, paint points are now 12 to 6. When they started going inside, it changed their offensive outlook. It gave them a little more confidence. Here's Scruggs launching a three that's short. Delgado, one of the great rebounders in Big East history, boxes out to collect another. Yeah, that was his sixth rebound. He didn't even Ooh. leave the floor. He just blocked out and commanded the weak side. I think he just got hit up high. Battling with Tyreek Jones. There's a couple of big, tough guys going at it there. Carrington, no. Hits the top of the backboard. And Delgado wincing in pain. This will be Xavier Ball. Take a look on the right side of the screen here. Oh, bumped heads. Uh, inadvertent headbutt from Jones. They're not going to call this fight, but... 
you can see definitely Delgado in pain, but he's shaking it off. If anybody's going to play Delgado physically, it's going to be Tyreek Jones. Look at the way he posts up strong. He's got the body for it. Our face is up on Delgado with four to shoot. Tyreek Jones got to get rid of it. Delgado stripped it in a shot clock violation. None worse for the wear after the headbutt. And he, he gets away with a strip and some wrist. But Tyreek Jones, as big and strong as he is, he's got to make a stronger move than that. If you're going to try to challenge and get Delgado in foul trouble, you've got to be more assertive. And Jones has not been great lately. Now coming off of the bench with how good Cantor's been. Jones stays in defending Delgado on this end. Powell runs the baseline and gets it, feeding Delgado against Jones with a drop step and a fadeaway. A rebound from Gates. Quinton Gooden stop and start. Got off his feet. It falls to Blewett, who puts it in for his first points of the game. Oh, Living right, Len. You got that right, Joe. I, nowhere to go for Quentin Gooden. You see, up in the air, gets caught. The deflection, but Trayvon Blewett right man in the right place he sees the loose ball before anyone else that kind of recognition paid dividends for him leading scorer for Xavier all four years that he's been there twice he's been first team all Big East put together another first team caliber season averaging 19 and a half per game so Xavier back to within two Rodriguez, after the hot start, has been quiet. Powell thought about it, got Marshall off his feet. Good. Delgado a jumper. Got it. Well, that's the part of Delgado's game that's certainly been underestimated. He's got the ability to knock down elbow jumpers. Part of his game he's going to need to have at the next level. He's going to be an effective player there. Yeah, because I think he's going to be a four, and he needs to help stretch the defenses a little bit. Marshall misfired, then hustled back and forced the turnover. Angel Delgado does a nice job. He sets up nicely, and as I said, that elbow jumper sets up, even though the pass was poor. Good form. Look at the rotation. That's just like... He was a guard. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him that, though. I won't, no. Because <laughs> they'll start living out there. Yeah, Kevin Willard doesn't want anybody to tell him that either. Blew it against Sonogo on a cancer screen. Lost the handle. Sonogo, one of the top defenders in the conference, comes up with a steal. Miles Powell launches. Xavier looks to push it. Marshall with a head of steam over Delgado, who pulls down the rebound. Already his seventh. And Miles Powell is one of those guys who's been red hot as well, but he needs to get started. That's definitely uh, that's out, Cantor. You're right. Try to draw the charge. No luck for him. College Hoops is sponsored by Progressive, your first round pick for car insurance, and by Continental Tire for what you do. Big East Wednesday night jam on FS1 starts at 6.30 Eastern. Good one. Marquette and Xavier. First time they met up, the Musketeers escaped with a 91-87 win. And then DePaul and Georgetown at 8.30. Watch all that on FS1 or stream it live on Fox Sports Go. Entertaining one in this one so far. The nation's only top 25 matchup of the weekend. Seton Hall with a 2016 lead. And so far, it's just been a battle of mid-range basketball. Xavier and Seton Hall, neither of them are shooting exceptionally well from the three, and that's an understatement. Xavier 22%, two of nine from beyond the arc, and Seton Hall one of five. But Seton Hall shooting 50% from the field as they continue to go inside, get a lot of points in the paint.
And Xavier had to follow suit to kind of match to get with him. I've seen Hall coming off a miserable shooting performance at Creighton. They were 8 for 28. Xavier, though, was red hot on Wednesday against St. John's, above 50% from three. Or that mid-range game, this one doesn't go for Carrington. You see that shot with Carrington, it was almost he was concentrating more on trying to draw the foul and hit the deck than actually putting the ball through the basket. You've got to focus on making shots and forget about trying to draw a foul. Nelson had the cancer. Averaging close to 20 per game over the last four. Scoreless so far. Stays that way as Delgado goes straight up. Cantor can't move Delgado. That's where Cantor has had success in moving opponents. But Delgado's too strong in the middle. Great vision. Finds Powell. Extra pass to no go. Against Bluey. Over the top. The offensive threat. At least it? most recently. <laughs> It's a foul on Powell. Last time out, this was the scene inside the huddle with Chris Mack. Biggest thing is, taking care of the ball, effort plays on the offensive glass, making sure that on the defensive end, we're tight, nasty, not giving up second shots. All right? Fellas, did a great job jumping back in this one. Let's win this war right here. Well, you certainly have to stroke your guys as they stay within striking distance on the road and take care of the ball. We've got five turnovers that have turned into five or four team hall points. So turnovers haven't really hurt them as far as conversion. This is nearly a Seton Hall turnover, but they say that it's a kick on Gooden. So Seton Hall catches a break. And let's check in with Lisa. That last bucket Kevin Willard should be happy about. He pointed at Angel Delgado and he said, if you feel that second man coming to you, you got to distribute it. And then he looked at some of his shooters. He looked at Miles Powell and he says, you have to be ready. You're one of our best three-point shooters. You haven't made one. You've got Powell here. So I guess Joe, he was listening to his coach. He got the message. Miles Powell, one of the great shooters in the conference, connects for the first time. And the Pirates have their largest lead. How prophetic. Powell averaging 19 points a game, the last two, red hot. Akira, such a savvy play, draws foul number three on Desi Rodriguez. And he'll get three, three free throws as a result. Well, take a look right here. You're not supposed to call a foul. Now watch him change. That's not his normal shooting. That's not his normal shooting form. And according to the rules, you're not supposed to reward guys that shoot out of their normal shooting form. That includes the guys who kick their legs out when they shoot the three as well. Again, savvy play by McClure, but I think the officials missed that one. And a big call at 620 here in the first half. Desi Rodriguez, who only played six minutes on Wednesday for different reasons, has to sit down with his third foul. And I think the, the rules committee wanted to kind of stop that and make sure that guys were in their normal shooting form in order to draw fouls as defenders. I mean, Rodriguez was really three feet away from McCurr, and McCurr leaned forward to make that contact. But again, you know, you take what the officials give you, and that's a smart play. Made two of three. Leading all scorers with seven now as Rodriguez sits down with those three fouls. And that's the big play right there. Put Rodriguez, who has a great deal of success against Xavier. He's already got six points in ten minutes. He's got him on the bench now. Akira Gamble. Powell looks to make him pay. Offensive rebound, Delgado. And an all-two on that trip for the Pirates. Yeah, Seton Hall's got to make him pay with the offensive rebound. Delgado averages over four offensive rebounds a game. Kicked by Sonogo. These are two really good rebounding teams. Xavier is top ten in the country. Out-rebounded St. John's on Wednesday night by 18. Actually getting out-rebounded in this one early on by Seton Hall. Here, 
They're on a Jones screen all the way inside. Lost the handle, but they'll say that it was last touch by Seton Hall. And they'll inbound it with nine to shoot. Five twenty-six left to go, first half, thirty-second break. Seen Hall by seven. Final minutes of this first half. Xavier coming off an 88-82 win against St. John's the other night. They were led by Blewett and Cantor and have been for much of the year. 23 for Blewett, 22 for Cantor on Wednesday, but today they've combined for just three. Yeah, Cantor, you look at those 13 rebounds. Very active on the glass because he's big and strong and move guys around, get his position. But against uh, Angel Delgado, he's found the immovable object as he tries to back him down. Delgado doesn't move. Oh, this play out of the inbound. Jones looked like a foul from behind, but no call. Like a game of volleyball there. And no one spiked it, man. No. Handles against Gates. Outside, here's a drive from Kale. No basket. Offensive foul. Well, the key is whether or not Tyreek Jones got there outside of the restricted area, which he did. He got there before the offensive player left his feet. Good call. Xavier in the bonus. Seventh team foul on Seton Hall. Musketeers trying to get it going on this end. There's a high percentage look for the freshman Paul Scruggs. Nice job by Gates to patiently wait for Scruggs to free himself from the defender. They had missed nine of their previous ten shots. And for that point blank look for the freshman out of Indianapolis. Delgado with a screen for Walker. Draws a mismatch against Jones. Quickly back inside. Delgado to the corner. Now it's Kale with five to shoot. Way outside Walker. 30 footers and air ball. And there was five seconds left on the shot clock. Put it on the floor a couple of times. Would not have hurt. That was a lack of patience right there. Here's an example of patience. See the cutter. He sets the screen and he just waits. Gates did a nice job of waiting until this man cleared. And that's what these guys do when they're clicking. It's a thing of beauty to watch Xavier on the offensive end share the ball. Blewett comes and grabs it. A step back triple. Left a little bit short. Makira just, I don't know, swatted it in. There's that spike we were looking for. Yeah, he was up there with the big boys, and he had the best timing. Delgado faces up on Jones. Andrew Delgado outside Carrington. And a rebound for Sinogo. Fresh possession, Seton Hall. Best offensive rebounding team in the Big East. They rebound about 35.5% of their misses. Carrington turning the corner. Into contact, no call. Should have been one. And it comes loose. Numbers for the Musketeers, but Makira throws it away. Boy, they had a three-on-one, a missed opportunity. Yes, sir. This is a no-call right here. I guess he walled up. He left his feet with both arms up in the air, so maybe it shouldn't have been. And then a terrific tip by J.P. Seton Hall's led much of the way, 25-22 with 3.07 left to go in the first half. And Angel Delgado, who averages a double-double on the season, four points, nine boards so far. And he's demonstrated the ability to step outside and shoot defensively. He will not be moved. Both Jones and Cantor try to back him down, and they can't. And look at the position that he commands. He's not a great leaper. There's no question about it, but he rebounds by position, by strength of hands. Or those nine rebounds today, Land, he's within 11 of Derek Coleman's Big East record back into the late 80s into 1990. And so assuredly we'll pass that at some point, and the rate he's at right now could even be today. At yeah, D.C., 
Outstanding rebounder back in his day for Syracuse. What a career Angel Delgado's had. Part of this senior class, all New York area kids. Got three 1,000 point scores in the group, and Carrington and Delgado and Rodriguez, and then Sinogo, their top defender. And the thing that's most impressive for me about Delgado is not he's not a super athlete, he's athletic, but he does it again with intelligence and great vision, finding Powell for his second three. He's got more assists than any non guard in the Big East, and picks one up there. Scruggs trying to split a double team. Does so successfully. It leads to a corner three from Blewett. <laughs> oh, man. You don't want that young man to wake up. Only six for him. Averages close to 20 a game. He's had 12 games with 20 points or more. So do go. Can't hit. Foul on Delgado. Headed the other way. It's his first. Take a look at the opening right here. Powell just comes on the screen down. Nobody close to him. He uses that screen nicely, and Seton Hall would love for Miles Powell to wake up. Again, they got last nine games, 15 points, shooting 50% from the field and 44% from beyond the arc. He's the guy that's been integral in their offensive attack. It's an ugly looking free throw from Tyreek Jones. It's a lane violation anyways. And right now, the scoring doesn't bode well for Seton Hall if you believe in the numbers. They're 0-3 when they're scoring under 70 points. So they need all of their scores. They're fearsome forcing to start getting on the, on the good foot. Delgado and Jones got tangled up. They'll call Jones his second. So we've talked about battling for position. You get their arms locked, and <laughs> Delgado does a nice job of selling it. Earned it. Jones sits down. <laughs> uh, <you> see? <laughs> he sold it so well, Chris Mack can imitate uh -huh. it perfectly. There's a bit of a caricature of it, but yeah. Get through, KT! O'Mara comes in for Jones. Kadeem Carrington gets some room, lets it fly, and hits. Side of two minutes in this first half. Seton Hall turning up the defensive pressure. Leads to some room for Makira. Ryan's blowing. This time he can't hit. Oh man, you can't appreciate that pass from Makura unless you're sitting where we were. Carrington the other way with a chance at three. And what's unfortunate, that pass was just a missed shot and then coast to coast. Good pass to push. And then with the defense backing up on their heels, Carrington makes them pay. That's just good basketball right there. Yeah, you got a little bye. First player to double figures. I believe back to eight for the Pirates with a minute and a half left. Should have been flexing his calf muscles and his ankles. Yeah, the way he was moving. <laughs> It's not as easy for the camera to find, though. Yeah. yeah. Akira. Tough shot goes. Now that's almost natural for J.P. Makira, who makes shots from a variety of angles. The one thing he does, though, he keeps his shoulders square to the basket and the ball in shooting position. Kale got it in deep. Great pass from Miles Powell. Side of a minute, good one gone. Only top 25 matchup in the country this weekend. Gates trying to make Powell pay. High arcing three goes for Kaiser Gates. That's why you don't gamble on the shooter, especially guys with range like Gates. And the second three of this first half. What a six-second differential between game and shot. Six or seven. Game Hall trying to stay perfect against ranked teams this season. They're 3-0. Oh. A 
Five-point lead on number 11. Closing seconds of the first half. Here's Carrington with a shot clock winding down off the front of the rim. And then the rim was grabbed and a whistle. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, Rob Stone, Donnie Marshall have scores and highlights from today's action. Next on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. That offense looked like it was going to yield something, but for some reason, Kadeem Carrington held on to the ball too much. You know, tried to make it and take it himself, even though the shot clock under 10, and that's the job of the point guard. But it's not just to create for yourself, create for others. And I think he forced that one. And then Sonogo is called for the foul on the Xavier in the bonus. Chance for some free points here in the closing seconds. We're going to go to the scorer's table, to the monitor to take a look at Corbett, Tony Chiazza. Yeah, I think they're taking a look at see who gets to the free throw line. Uh-huh. That's an important thing. Blew it very good there. There aren't too many guys on this Xavier team that aren't very good <laughs> You're right. from the line. Oh, it looks like it's blew it. But to your point, Gates is an 80% shooter, too. Top 15 in the country as a team at the line. Yep, they got it right. Tony Chiazza confirming that it will be blew it with a one and one. Only six points in this first half, but as we've seen time and time again, Blewett can get hot in a hurry, scoring bunches. You can look at the scores in the scoring column after 20 minutes and see a single-digit number like he's got now. And look up at the end of the game, and he's got 25. He's just had that kind of career. Well, the thing that's turned the tide for Xavier is when they started to go inside a little more and stop playing around the perimeter as they did early in the game. This is the front end of the one-and-one. A chance here for Seton Hall. It's Carrington at the horn. And that's how this first half comes to an end. Seton Hall took control with a 9-0 run in the early going and leads Xavier 35-30. Trying to stay perfect at home this season. And perfect against ranked teams on the year. Let's go to Lisa Byington. Well, you're holding a team that averages about 85 points per game down below their average here in the first half. How do you evaluate your defensive work? Oh, I think I, I thought my guys played extremely tough and physical. Uh, Xavier's as physical as it gets. We kept them off the glass, limited the easy second shots. Got them to take a lot of jump shots, which we were trying to do. Dizzy Rodriguez in foul trouble. You had to play without him for the last six minutes. How do you feel like you sustained that? Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll bounce back. He's smart enough to know that. You know, he's got three. We'll hide him a little bit on defense. I thought he did a great job being aggressive early. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? All right, thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Coach Willard. 35-30. After 20 minutes, Rob and Donnie update you on all the action across the country. A lot going on this weekend. And they'll have it all for you in the Jeep Halftime Report. The other side of this break, after 20 minutes at the Rock in a top 25 showdown, at Seton Hall in front of Xavier. Sponsored by G Grand Cherokee and through with a half here in Newark. 19th ranked Pirates with a 35 30 lead over Xavier. And seen all some impressive stuff in that first half playing team basketball. 10 assists on their 15 buckets. Well, I mean, their success, success on offense has a lot to do with playing together. Ball movement, playing inside out, and certainly when you're doing that, there's a tendency for guys to be more animated and move without it. And when you move without and get yourself open and you know you're playing together, you're going to get buckets. Ten assists on 15 field goals. Here's the Jeep stats comparison. They're also out-rebounding one of the top rebounding teams in the country in Xavier, plus six. A lot of that has been Angel Delgado, who has nine Seton Hall rebounds already. What is it you're looking forward to here in the second half? Well, I expect Xavier to try to go back to attacking inside. Karim Cantor scoreless, and he's a guy that really has helped Xavier over the last several games. But in the end, it's going to come down to whether or not they can get Angel Delgado in foul trouble, or at least force him to play defense, move him, because that's the key right now. He's doing a good job rebounding, doing a good job on the offensive end. He's one guy that they've, Xavier's got to kind of get loose. 
Lisa Byington, you talked to Chris Mapp. I did, and he talked a lot about Angel Delgado to me and, and exactly what you guys were saying. He said he's such a presence here on the basketball court. Not that we are intimidated, but we're always aware of where Angel Delgado is, and he really felt like Delgado himself affected some of the shots that they took in the first part of the first half. He was much, much happier at their offensive looks in the second part of that first half, Joe. Put it all together, and it's only 38% from the field for a team that on this season shoots 50 percent so here we go over the second half and the nation's only top 25 matchup of the day it's immediately quentin gooden gets his hand on the ball and then a whistle as rodriguez and gooden dive after it and it sounds like rodriguez touched it last double team right there and gooden steps up creates the double uh creates some turnover. Rodriguez falls on it, but his Watch hand's out of bounds. And he's lucky he didn't pick up his fourth foul in that skirmish. Yeah, when I, when I talked about Xavier getting loose from Delgado, they got to free themselves from him in the middle. That's one way to do it, challenge him. He didn't know whether he should stay with Cantor or allow Gooden to go to the basket. Let Gooden go by, got his first points of the game. Now Miles Powell off the front of the rim with a three. They'll reset it with Rodriguez. Yeah, we talked about the outstanding Tight offensive Tight rebounding Tight of Seton Hall. 35.5% of their misses, they get them back. Here's Delgado against Cantor. Angel Delgado outside Carrington with an extra pass for a Rodriguez three. Desi Rodriguez not letting the foul trouble bother him. And now Makira can't hang on to the bullet pass. Carrington, Euro steps, lays it off. Back to back buckets for Rodriguez. You know, there are times when guys get in a funk because they've been in foul trouble. Rodriguez having to sit on the bench because of three fouls in the first half. He's come out with fire in his eyes. Yeah, he sat the final 6.20 of that first half with five quick ones here to move him into double figures on the afternoon. And I've never seen Cantor that hesitant offensively. Makira has never in his life been hesitant, but it was contested by Carrington. Back comes Seton Hall. Rodriguez with a head of steam and a foul on the floor on Xavier. Well, Kadeen Carrington, he is the leader of this team, and when he's on, things work right, and Rodriguez running with him. And we talked about team basketball. First half served Seton Hall well. That extra pass, Carrington to Rodriguez, gets a good look. Whatever was said in the locker room, Seton Hall's come out, and they have established themselves here at least so far here in the second half. I like they did early on in the first half for that 9-0 run. Rodriguez open again. This one rattles out. Offensive rebound, Sonogo. And Powell will stop it down. Boy, how many times have you said offensive rebound <laughs> for Seton Hall? And again, they, they're just so active. They've got their largest lead of the afternoon. Good and around a Jones screen. A long two to silence the crowd for now. And a jump shot by Quentin Gooden, who is not, you know, exactly a long-range shooter, just 39% from the field. But you saw the Seton Hall defense flattened out and gave him that shot. And he'll force them to play him honest now with making it. Rodriguez got blocked by Blewett. Sonogo tracked down the loose ball. Powell with a baseline drive. Well, how about Sonogo doing all the dirty work, getting the offensive rebound, extra possessions. He's everywhere. Carrington, a long one. There's still plenty of time on the shot clock. He tossed that up there. And Boy, Andrew will take it. I was going to say, how do you do that in front of your coach? I mean, Rodriguez misses that. New shot clock, good hustle. And, you know, obviously that's the last. The, the bucket before that with Powell going down. But that last one, Carrington right in front of Kevin Willard takes that 40-footer. Well, that hit official Ed Corbett and saved it in bounds. Great hustle, Sonogo. But if not for Ed Corbett, it was headed to the sideline. It would have been Seton Hall basketball, I think. Yeah. Good enough. Points early on in the second half after he was scoreless in the first 20. 
And that's established himself. That upper body strength served him well. Makura to the foul line for two shots. Well, they're asking, see, Noel's asking for kickballs. Delgado is signaling that. But Makura, he saw it coming, put his body on the line. You know, Carrington obviously trying to send a message on that one. But kickball doesn't necessarily mean the ball hits somebody's foot. It has to be kicked out. It has to be intentional. Yeah. Two shots from Akira. And Xavier, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country on the season, just four of eight there today. And you're right, no kicking action. It was thrown into his yeah. foot. I mean, his foot is yeah. literally flat on the ground. There's what nothing he can do. Yeah. One of two. The no go, his third offensive rebound of the second half, and he'll have a chance to pay it off with a three point play. Under 16 left in this one, Seton Hall by seven. Well, Ishmael Sonogo, 6'8 senior, doing the dirty work. Brought his hard hat, making it pay. Now look like the Musketeers have gotten things on track the last couple of games, but taking a step back so far today, well short of their season scoring average, the pace they're on, and they're getting out-rebounded by 10 on the season. They're top 15 in America. Yeah, and first in the Big East in rebound margin, and I think that's where the story's being told, particularly in this half. Uh, Ismail Sinogo, four offensive rebounds in the half. He's played in... 18 of the 19 games for Seton Hall and only had 25 offensive rebounds coming into this game. And but four since halftime. Yeah, and he has really worked the weak side glass. That's what we talk about doing the dirty work. To me, I measure the prowess of rebounders by offensive rebounding because it's the most difficult uh, aspect of rebounding. What do you know about rebounding, Len Elmore? I, I read a book once. Uh -huh. Leather bound. Book. <laughs> Eight-point lead for Seton Hall after the three-point play for Ismail Sinogo. Ray blew it. Now Makira giving some room and buries a triple. Well, he wanted that, and you can see him line it up. Even took a little bump from Rodriguez, but once again squares up. Rodriguez against Kaiser Gates with a spin move over the top. The Jasmine yeah. in. Yeah. You know, Rodriguez is not one of those guys that's going to force a three. You know, he worked himself well to get in the mid range right where he needs it. Good and goes end to end and gets fouled. Go back to Denzi Rodriguez's latest bucket. Now 13 in the middle of score. Again, 17 double figure games, 16 consecutive until the stumble at Creighton. And you see him just work to where he needs. And at 6'6", with terrific reach, he can shoot the ball over 6'8", Kaiser Gates. Good at giving room by Carrington. Akira. Here's Gates traveling. Play. The key to that defensive play was Rodriguez cutting off Makura going to his right. Once he did that, Makura was stymied, had to give up the ball, and then the turnover was created. A low pass. 
down to the floor. Delgado and Makira comes to Gates against Sonogo. He fouls him. The second on Ishmael Sonogo, who will send Kaiser Gates to the line for two shots. One good thing for Xavier, though, is that they're not feeling intimidated. Every time they get an opportunity to go to the basket and challenge, they're doing it. It's a couple really tough throwback-style teams here. Yeah, and you like that kind of play. You like guys that aren't going to back down, that are willing to take the physical play and make something out of it. Boy, Xavier at the foul line today is 5 of 10. On the season, close to 80% as a team. One more for the junior from Georgia, Kaiser Gates. He's got seven, and the lead is six. Yeah, those are the kinds of things at the end of a game, particularly if you lose, you look back and you say missed opportunities. But if this is a close game down the stretch, I suspect Xavier is going to get back into form and start knocking shots down. They do a great job down the stretch of hitting big free throws. Carrington steps into a three. Around it out. Offensive rebound again, but Delgado can't capitalize. But he got the rebound barely leaving the ground because his position was established so well and his hands are so good. Romero shovels it outside. Gooden called for the offensive foul. That's Sonogo, one of the best defenders in the Big East. And look at him again, takes the position away. Anticipated where Gooden was going. Gooden couldn't stop, put that little chicken wing out. I've heard you talk a couple times about how Delgado doesn't have the best ups in the world, but such great feel, and that's such a big part of rebound. Exactly. Positioning is equally as important, if not more important, than your ability to play it over rim. Wow, with a tough shot at no chance. Blew it the other way. Well short with a three. Delgado has that one fall in his lap and whips it ahead to Powell. The trailer is Rodriguez. He'll set it up. Rodriguez a crossover. Next down a jumper and gets on. Bears repeating seven career games against Xavier. Rodriguez averages almost 18 points, almost eight rebounds a game, and shooting way over 50%. I guess when he sees Xavier come, his eyes get bigger than the basket. Inside to O'Mara. Had some success working it inside in the first half. Not this time. Another for Delgado. And it's another the team one. Sorry, Joe, and another example of position. Never left his feet, extended his arms, and O'Mara had all sorts of problems. Delgado on the offensive side. Kicks it out. Carrington the up thing. Rises. No. Blew it. Rebounds. Oh, no, Foul by Sinogo. That was silly. Check in with Lisa. Well, I talked to Angel Delgado yesterday at practice about how he goes about rebounding. He says, I study shooters. When we watch film, I watch where the shot goes. I try to outsmart them, not outjump them. So I know who the good shooters are, the ones with the softer shot. I also know who the brick shooters are, the ones <laughs> that'll hit harder off the rim. And that is, he has made it a science here, guys. He also told me, by the way, he's planning on getting 24 rebounds today. He's at wow. 13 right now. Oh, he's done it before. Although Xavier has to cooperate and miss more shots, but he's getting just about everything that's coming off. O'Mara off the heel. A... Makira blindfolded, throws it back off the glass and in. That guy never ceases to amaze you with his hustle. You know, he makes those tough plays look pretty easy. His 15 lead the Musketeers. O'Mara fronting Delgado here. Rodriguez rises over Gates. A long rebound as Struggs yanks down. Akira drives, finds Gates, his three, well strong. O'Mara the offensive ball. Up in traffic, two more. And a timeout for Kevin Wheeler as Xavier is drawn to within four on the blow it bucket. Yeah, J.P. McCure, sneaky athletic. Look at that. Gets that tip under the basket. 
It's magic, man. Seen Hall's led almost the entire way. Xavier's whittled it down to four with 11.33 left to go. And both these teams comfortably right now in the NCAA tournament field. Here are their seeds according to our Howie Schwab. He's got Xavier as a three. And Seton Hall on that six line along with Creighton. Those are a couple tough six seeds to draw. Yeah, I, you don't want to play either one of those teams, obviously, if they get past the first couple of rounds. You know, just because of what they present in this team right here, inside outside play, the ability to not only knock down threes, but certainly to go inside, rebounding prowess. And Xavier, we saw what they did last year, got to the Elite Eight, and no one really expected them to get past the first weekend. Especially with the way they finished last year, they're really bad over the final month or so, but got hot at the right time. Advance to the Elite Eight before bowing out against Gonzaga. Yeah, they're a year older and a year smarter. So. Carrington, no, and Gates able to clear it. It's not been a simple thing for Xavier. Ten offensive rebounds for Seton Hall. Here's Jones. The double comes, so he kicks to Scrubs. Jones gets an offensive rebound. Scrubs gets a better look. He will have a chance at three. Xavier within two, and Paul Scruggs to the foul line with a chance to bring him within one on the other side of this break with a good one going into it. Xavier's pulled to within two. We go in the huddle with Chris Mack. The more stops we get, the faster you guys got to run to offense. All right, let him make him give up, make him give up. Faster, faster we are down the floor. All right, got to have all five guys rebound the ball. All right. Chris Mack looking for transition. Wants to make some stops, but making stops means that you got to get out and run. He thinks that he can wear Seton Hall down, particularly with the unit that's on the floor right now. It started big with Kareem Cantor, particularly. Trying to go inside, they tried Sean O'Meara. You know, playing big didn't necessarily work. So now he's got his quickness and athleticism out there on the floor. They call a foul on Kaiser Gates. As he tied up there with Delgado. How about on the other sideline, Lisa Byington? Yeah, Kevin Willard's huddle. He looked at his team and he said, guys, we need to show some maturity. It's like we've never played with a lead before. He talked about spreading their offense a little bit more. He said, if you guys are going to take the jumper, the pull-up jumper, that's fine. But you can't have like four to eight people in the lane while you do it. We're our own worst enemy right now as they turn it over again. Uh, the moving screen on Michael Enzi. That brings Ismail Sonogo back on very quickly. This short breather. But again, Xavier going with more shooters, a little more quickness and athleticism instead of power down low, believing that that's what's gotten them within this one possession. They do enter it in deep to Tyreek Jones against Delgado. No call, and Delgado comes up with it. Sees Powell ahead of the pack. It's tipped ahead for Rodriguez. Boy, how about the recognition by Powell? Saw Bluer trying to shoot the gap. And fought for possession. Bluer with enough room to can a jumper. <laughs> hey, Joe, you're right. You say enough room. How about like a crack in the exactly. door? Exactly. That's take all much. he needs. He's into double figures. That way to his season average, top five in the conference. Look at the battle between Delgado and Jones, man. He pushed Delgado way outside. Delgado puts it on the deck. A running shot won't go. And then a foul on the rebound on Ishmael Sonogo. That's number four on Sonogo. Sonogo looks like he's hurt his shoulder. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Saw that nice job there by Powell, getting up and tipping it forward, avoiding Blewett shooting the gap. And, you know, that kind of recognition pays dividends. you got to be aware. Tanogo's still down. 
initially he grabbed his shoulder. He would leave the game anyways right now because that foul was his fourth. Look at that right arm with Trayvon Blewett. Oh, yeah. Kind of yanked him. Might have yanked it up. I'm not going to. I'm not going to guess, but it definitely looked. I've suffered an injury like that before. Sonogo's headed back to the locker room, and Xavier's headed to the line. That's already the seventh foul on Seton Hall, and you said it earlier. Xavier, one of the top foul shooting teams in the country, not good so far today. But teams where you see those really high foul numbers tend to be good down the stretch like we find ourselves in here. Yeah, they get to the line, they start missing a few, then the comfort level sets in. Maybe not. Yet. <laughs> Apparently. Well, that's huge with Sonogo, who has done a terrific job on the offensive glass, terrific job defending. Tough pass caught by Delgado, and a foul underneath. That's number six on the Musketeers, and so the rest of the way, Seton Hall will shoot. They call Blewett for number two. And that was so exemplary of what Delgado brings. Tough pass, as you mentioned, and those good hands inside. Is actually foul number five, so not yet into the bonus for the Pirates. Rodriguez. There's foul number six. Ziggett Gates for number three. Well, they're finding a weak link right now. Apparently, it's Kaiser Gates on the drive. Just can't keep Rodriguez from turning the corner without fouling. You got to move your feet. And one thing I've noticed, Gates doesn't get down low enough, get his center of gravity down low enough to be able to move laterally and stay with Rodriguez. Just barely triggered that one in. Now he's doing a little bit better, but you got to get low. Low man wins when you're trying to move laterally, keep guys from turning the corner. Carrington way outside. Wow. We're close. That's just not good offense. Early on in the shot clock, Carrington settles for 25 foot three. Here's Makira feeding it inside Jones. This game has not been tied. Enzi comes up with a steal. Enzi doing his Sonogo imitation. <laughs> Rodriguez had it stripped, and Xavier will head the other direction. Try, 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 try. Makira out of the corner, and Xavier takes the lead for the first time since the opening minutes of this one. How about that? You talk about confidence. Huge jumper. You heard Chris Mack in his huddle. He wanted his guys to run in transition. They got to their spots. Powell looks to answer. In and out, but will shoot three. They get Makira for the foul. And Miles Powell to the line for three shots, but with his Makira three, Xavier in front. Pushing it up in transition. Movement without it. Makura makes it happen. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Newark. Go in the huddle with Kevin Willard. Keep battling on defense right here. Keep battling on defense. We got to get, get out in transition a little bit. We got to get something easy. Got to get something. Don't worry about our turnovers. Don't worry about your missed shots. Keep balling right now. We're going to be up two. Miles going to make his free throws. We're going to be up two. Right when we start. Well, that's easy to say. You got 82% free throw <laughs> shooter on the line. But more importantly, Kevin's right. You know, his team has had difficulty scoring. They haven't scored in the last two minutes and 13 seconds. They've got to find some easy shots. You know, that's what helps you climb out of a drought. But more importantly, it's going to energize if they can get it done. Energize his team, get him back with rhythm when you're running the floor and get some easy ones. Ball hits the first of three, and we check in with Lisa. 
Smack in his huddle told his guys, hey, we have seven defensive stops in this half. Good job, guys. Here's a news flash. We're going to need at least eight or nine. And one of the defensive adjustments they're going to make, the off guard, the one who is not defending Desi Rodriguez, expect that off guard defensively to sort of drop back into the lane to prevent any Rodriguez pull-up, guys. So watch for that in the next few defensive possessions. All right, Rodriguez, 17, the lead all scores in this one as Powell connects on two of three to put Seton Hall in front by a point under eight. Number 11 against number 19, and it's better than oh, one. Man. But Kira missed point blank. He would have been better off dunking the ball. Just slipped right out of his hands. Of course, the crowd loves it any time they can give it back to J.P. Makira. Been wearing it from him across the Big East for four years. Miles Powell started to stumble. Found Rodriguez with the shot clock down to five. He drives. Contested shot with the left hand goes. And as Lisa said, the off guard was going to help, but Scruggs got there too late. Rodriguez drove left, and Scruggs was at the right and didn't recognize until it was too late to help. Blow it with an offensive foul. His third, and back to Seton Hall's last possession. All right, here's that off guard, Paul Scruggs, and you see the play being established right there with Gates on him. Scruggs waiting, but Rodriguez goes to his left, and Scruggs too late. So he wants to drop back in the paint as Kaiser Gates, unfortunately for that play, forces him left instead of right into the help. Delgado against O'Meara. A couple of big bodies going at it inside, and Delgado's hook shot rattles home. I don't even think he saw the basket. <laughs> it's that feel land. He it's... just knew where it was. Makira, silencer. Somebody get an umbrella. He drew rain. That's the kind of arc he put on that shot, and you're right. I wouldn't blame him if he put his finger to his lips and said, He's done that a time or two. 21 for him. Back into Delgado. Beat O'Meara the last time to foot down the floor. This time he's called for an offensive foul. Kevin Willard not happy. Delgado backs in. The call is using his left arm. And I guess he did with the swing. But Makura once again set up, squared up, and draws rain. Take a look at the left arm. A lot of guys have been taking acting classes today, man, on both uh -huh. sides. Third foul on Delgado. Makura against Powell. JP Makura gets wow. blocked this time. Last touch by Seton Hall, eight to shoot. Excellent job by Delgado to avoid the foul and still deflect that one. And the Makira, six on the shot clock. Here's Blewett fading away. And connecting on a three. The put X back in front near the five and a half minute mark. Easy call. I mean, there's no play to be called. That's just man to man. And right now, between McCurr and Blue at the scene, he's a savior. Delgado lost it. Romero saved it inbounds. Another one of the seniors helping Xavier out. And there's the stop Chris Mack talked about in running transition. Seeing all a nice job of getting back, fourth and half court. Scruggs for three. Tipped around. Out to Blue. Xavier trying to take advantage of a second chance like Seton Hall's done so many times today. Inside five minutes in a one-point game. O'Mara. Rodriguez got his hand on. Chemistry is so important in this game. And two guys that have played together for a long time. And take a look at McCurr with the ball. And he just sees and reads blew it who fake going on Unison's screen 
and then step back. Makira steps back off the front of the rim. Carrington clears the rebound. Kadeem Carrington, one on three, doesn't care, and Seton Hall retakes the lead. Scruggs. Makira can't finish. O'Meara kicks it out, and Gates gets the roll on a three. What a game we've got going at the Rock. Give Makura credit for keeping it alive. O'Mara credit for kicking it back. And that's the best time to take a three after an offensive rebound. The defense is sucked into the paint. And the shooter is flowing to the basket. You see Ishmael Sonogo is back in the game for Seton Hall after going to the locker room with what looked like a shoulder injury. Garrington can't hit. Scrubs the rebound. A foul on the rebound. Goes on Xavier. They get Scruggs. Oh, this is fast and furious right there. McCurr keeps it alive. And Gates is ready and poised to knock down that three. Oh, ah, Bill. Eleventh rank Xavier with a two-point lead on number 19 Seton Hall. And we look at the game reset sponsored by SoFi. Rethinking personal finance. Eight lead changes in this second half. A couple of teams, or both teams with a couple of timeouts, and both teams in the bonus possession arrow point Xavier's direction. AP McCure leading the way for the Musketeers with 21. On the other side, it's Desi Rodriguez, 19. Joe Davis, Len Elmore, Lisa Byington here at the Prudential Center for the day's only top 25 matchup. Delgado at the line here for a one and one. Nowhere close. Gates has the rebound. As we saw the fouls, it's going to be critical for both teams to get on the mark shooting free throws as Xavier is one from being in the double bonus. Seton Hall two. And Ishmael, I'm sorry, Ishmael Sonogo back on the floor. O'Mara banks it in. His first points in two games, and Xavier's lead of four is its largest of the day. Delgado real slow in getting to O'Mara. I think focused on trying to help on penetration. Just lost his man. Now Carrington drives it into O'Mara with a tough shot that won't go. Scruggs has it knocked away, but a foul on Miles Powell. We'll go back to O'Meara's bucket. No way! So yeah, up high, Delgado trying to help too much and just leaves his man wide open. See him double-teaming the ball instead of getting back. And give Makura again, a guy who's been the catalyst in so many big plays, give him credit for taking the double-team and dropping it down to a wide-open O'Meara. All right, you've been saying they're going to start to find their groove at the foul line. It's crunch time now. And they still search. And there's Sinogo back in the game with the rebound. Just call me to kiss of death. <laughs> I'm shocked. Three minutes to go. And really seeing all dodge one as Carrington's miss, you thought that Xavier was going to capitalize. An 11-2 run right now for the Musketeers. Who will it be for Seton Hall? Miles Powell with a finger roll that will send him to the line. And coming up tomorrow, the Eagles and the Vikings in the NFC Championship game. The Eagles trying to get to the Super Bowl for the first time since the 04 season. Vikings trying to do it for the first time since 74. All happens tomorrow, 6 Eastern, here on Fox. And as always, you can stream it live on Fox Sports Go. And the Philadelphia faithful didn't think Nick Foles had it. Nah. Anyway. How about that? They lost Powell. They believe in him now. Though. Yeah, they do. Right. Everybody's jumping aboard. Including their biggest fan, our producer, Bo Garrett. He's one of them. One of two for Powell. Back to a one-possession game. But Gooden comes in, replacing Paul Scruggs at point guard. And again, I mentioned Ishmael Sonogo back on the floor. Looked like he was in a great deal of pain. That's why I'm glad I didn't speculate. 
Because those kind of tie-ups can do crazy things to the ball and socket of your shoulder. And he's he's suffered shoulder issues. Battles. Yep. Two and a half to go. Kaiser Gates, catch and shoot. Long rebound, and Makira tracks it down and gets fouled. Number four on Miles Powell. J.P. Makira has found himself right in the middle of it time and time again today. And the more these fans chant his name derisively, the harder he works. And look at this. He just beats the no-go to the ball. That, that's just desire right there. 21 points, now five rebounds. And it's Makira to get it going at the foul line for Xavier. From Lakeville, Minnesota. What a career he's had at Xavier. Makes both free throws, and the lead is five. Largest of the game for X. Now Jeff Clark to the scores table. They're going to reset it and do it again. And they say the clock started a little bit early. Yeah, Carrington didn't touch the ball as it was inbounded. So the clock shouldn't have started. Start now. Put two seconds back on. Delgado. Now it's Powell. Desi Rodriguez rises. No. It's tipped out of bounds and it'll stay on this end as O'Mara touched it last. Take a look. Take a look at this play right here. Missed it. The official is, boy, Fluid uses hips to really clear Rodriguez out. That's a point of emphasis, dislodging rebounders. Got away with it. There's Makira again getting his hand on a loose ball. The possession arrow, if they call a tie-up, will send it to Xavier. There's still no indication. Now there it is. J.P. McKeer once again playing the game of his life this afternoon. And it's just, this is just, again, creates the turnover with the swipe, goes after it and gets possession. Just quick hands right here. It's Powell, too lackadaisical with the ball, and you can't be that way around Makura. And as I said, these fans stopped chanting his name. <laughs> yeah. They stopped messing with him because he's been definitely messing with them. Here's good. Now Blewett's hands against Sinogo. Blewett drives and a tough shot that Makira follows. Oh, it is JP's world and we're all just living in it today. What a show 55's put on. Timeout Seton Hall. Uh, how can you forget about him? You don't put a body on it. That's right, Bill. I understand. <laughs> what can you do? You know, here he is right here, and he's just going to find a way to get to that basket. Miles Powell just totally forgets about him. Your guard, the guy with the greatest amount of hustle, the most tenacious rebounder on this Xavier team, and you just let him go? Wow. I'm all right. You don't have to worry about me. <laughs> Bill Murray's son, Luke Murray, an assistant on the Xavier staff. If you're not familiar with why he's here rooting X on. It's a 15-3 run for the Musketeers to get their largest lead of the game. And well, suddenly there's a minute 20 left to go, and Seton Hall finds itself in a huge hole, largely because of what J.P. McCura's done. 25 points. We got our McCura highlight package coming right at you. Do we have enough time? Maybe not. I mean, he has put on a show, and a lot of it with pure hustle, certainly skill involved, finding ways to get open and knocking down some shots, but most of his biggest plays have everything to do with effort and hustle. So who will it be for Seton Hall to try and answer J.P. McKeera's heroic performance? 
You know, obviously Xavier has not won on Seton Hall's home floor as long as McCurr has been at Xavier. And he says, I'm not going out like this. Knock to the bounds. The officials have come together to decide who touched it last. We're going to go to the monitor for it. Now Xavier has never won in Newark in six tries. Uh, moves off O'Mara. Yep. Off his leg. Xavier's never won here. Nobody besides Seton Hall's won here this year. They're 11 and all. Not lost to a ranked team this season. And while Xavier's been good against good competition, they've still not won a top 25 road game. Find themselves a minute 13 from accomplishing that. That review actually gives both teams an extra timeout. Bit of a strip with Scruggs. It's hard to see right there, but we saw it before. It looked like it was off O'Mara's right leg. Total stay on this end of the floor. Not a whole lot of time for Seton Hall to work with. It's going to have to be close to perfect down the stretch. Rodriguez, the inbounder. Can't find anybody until Sonogo comes free. Dean Carrington a step back three. O'Mara the rebound. You know, when things aren't working for you and the shot's not falling, this is not the time to try to teach check, but he makes up for it with a steal and then fouled from behind by Scruggs. Here's an opportunity, though. Good hands right there. Just reaches across and takes it. If Kadeen Harrington can dunk, that would have been the time to do it. Two shots coming for him, above 80% on the season. Carrington led the way with 10 in the first half, but he's been quiet, only two since the break. You know, I talked about Carrington, and, you know, trying to find your touch. 0 of 7 from beyond the arc. You know, it's still, it's not time anymore to continue to try to test your touch. You got to find better shots or better people who have been successful from beyond the arc. This is crunch time. Big make there so they can set up the press. Five point game, 53 seconds. It's good. And the double comes and he finds Blewett. Able to spin his way into the front court. And the foul. On Walker. And remember, I said it earlier. Seton Hall is 0-3 when they're scoring under 70 points. You know, they need to generate offense to be able to come out victorious. And right now, it doesn't look like they're going to make it to 70. Such is the Big East this year, right? Yeah, for the most part, it's a shooter's league. But when you stumble, you know, more times than not, if you're not scoring in the high 70s or 80s, you're not winning. They're held to a season low, 63 on Wednesday at Creighton. And 62 right now. With 46 seconds left, they trail by seven. Powell, three. Delgado gets the rebound over O'Mara and finishes. Full five-point game with 36 left. Scruggs is fouled by Carrington. For Xavier, 35 seconds from getting a third consecutive win. Here's what they have coming up next. Won't be an easy one Wednesday against a high-powered Marquette attack. And St. John's and Georgetown, a couple of games will be favored heavily. And if you look at Marquette particularly, you're going to have to put points on the board. As in conference games, Marquette's averaging 83 points a game. You know, Xavier a little bit under that at close to 82. But defensively, there are only five teams in the conference that are holding people, you know, under 79 points. 
Xavier right at that line at 80, but they've done a terrific defensive job here. A couple of big free throws for the freshman Scruggs. Back to a seven-point game, and now Jones comes up with a steal. And they foul Makira. He'll have a chance to add on to his 25 points. And Kevin Willard's team. And Danger dropping this one after the blowout loss on Wednesday at Creighton. And be favored at DePaul, but then a rough, rough stretch. Providence at Villanova. And they welcome Marquette in here. Yeah, only 63 points against Creighton. And the same things that are ailing Seton Hall here ailed them at that particular point. They weren't able to get Kadeen Carrington going. You know, Angel Delgado, you know, for the many rebounds that he's got, you know, he's only scored eight points. And I blew it to steal, and that will do it. Let it roll out. And you said it uh, at some point a good free throw shooting team like Xavier is going to figure it out. They made their last seven. You got it right, Ron. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah, and Xavier will win this one by nine. First time in program history. They get a win in Newark. They get their first top 25 road win of the season. And Chris Mack's team is now 18 and 3. 73-64, the final score and what was an entertaining one from The Rock. Coming up after this break, it's the NFL Championship Chase for Len Elmore, Lisa Byington, and the rest of our crew. Joe Davis saying so long and have a great rest of your weekend.